and welcome to our exercises for the hand, wrist and forearm. These are exercises that you can do at home. Um, for the purpose of the video, I'm going to be the helper to show you how to handle the person's arm and hand. Um, we do want to encourage people to do as much of the exercises that they can themselves. Um, so it might be that the helper just needs to join in for part of that. Just to begin with, you need to make sure that the person's arm is well supported using a pillow and their arm should be out in front of them um, um, they should be supported behind, they might be in a wheelchair or an armchair, whatever is comfortable for them. As the helper, I am, for the purpose of the video, on a bit of an angle so that you can see. It might be that you want to come in right next to them, stand, sit, whatever is best for your posture. Um, with all exercises, we need to make sure that you're not pushing into pain, working to your own limitations, um, of both the person that's doing the exercises and the helper. If you have any questions or want any advice, then you can always give us a call or an email. Our lines are still open. Um, so we're gonna start with the first exercises with the fingers. So I would suggest that you support the person's arm at the wrist and then almost cup your fingers around their fingers using the heel of your hand at their knuckles just to offer a bit of support. So the purpose of this exercise is to straighten and then bend the fingers. If you can ask the person to straighten as much as they can, they can themselves and then you can always just help with the extra stretch at the end and the same with the bending, ask them to bend and then you can just help to bend those fingers a little bit further. If you feel any pain doing this exercise, then just ease off a little bit so you're not overstretching. So if you do about five repetitions of each. Good, I've lost count of reps already. So we'll do, Four maybe? Yeah, we'll do one more. So stretch the fingers open and then closed. Okay, for the next exercise, this is a, a stretch for the thumb. So if you can bring the fingers just out of the way a little bit so it's not obstructing the thumb, that'd be great. If not, don't worry, you can move the thumb around it, the fingers a little bit. So if you stabilize the hand around fingers and kind of side of the palm, take the thumb, make sure you're not holding right on the end of the thumb so it wiggles around and not just at the base, you want to kind of offer a little bit of support at both ends. And then you're simply just going to bring the thumb across the palm and away. So that gives a stretch of the thumb across and away. Good. Again, getting the person to do as much of the movement as they can themselves. They might be able to go all the way across. They may only be able to go part way and you just help to facilitate that last bit of movement that they might not be able to do. Good. We're going to do two more of those, so thumb across, and away, thumb across and away. Good. So we've had a look at the fingers and the thumb, we're then going to move up to the wrist. Now the best way that I normally do this is just imagine that you're shaking the person's hand, so you're doing that kind of hand grip. Um, again, you can stabilise around the forearm, not at the wrist this time because you don't want to restrict the movement, so if you place a hand there. So this is a flexion and extension, so there's this movement of the wrist. So we want to bring the, the wrist back as far as is comfortable and then the wrist forwards and then bringing it back and forwards and by having this kind of grip you are supporting the hand so that you simply get that flexion and extension movement. Again, asking the person to do as much of the movement they can themselves and then just help them with the, the bit of the movement they can't do. So back and then look forwards and back. We'll do 
one more forward and back good so we're going to move on to the next movement which is wrist pronation and supination so it's the twisting of the wrist so this time i would suggest that you stabilize at the elbow again you can do the same kind of handshaking hold because it's a nice way to support the, the wrist and the hand so we're going to get the person to turn their palms up towards the ceiling which is your supination and then down towards the ground which is your pronation and then turn them up again not pushing into any kind of pain they may feel a slight stretch which is okay but anything painful probably means that you're going too far and you need to ease off a little bit And by stabilising at the elbow, you're making sure that the elbow isn't moving in and out too much, which might cause discomfort. And up. Good. So, working our way up the arm, we're going to start doing some elbow flexion and extension. So, normally, if you kind of support at the wrist, um, I've got my thumb kind of at the back of the hand there, just to give a bit of support. And then again, hand underneath the elbow to make sure that it's not kind of, the whole arm isn't wiggling around. So if we start with the arm just resting on the pillow, we're going to aim to take the thumb up towards the shoulder. Nice little fit there. <laughs> and then all the way straight and then up towards the shoulder, good. And everybody will have slightly different amount of range. So just go into wherever is comfortable. Good. And straighten again, asking the person to do as much of the movement they can themselves. They may only get to there. You can then come in and facilitate a little bit more movement and turn them the way down, get them to bring the arm down and then they may just need a bit of help for that extra bit of movement there. Good. And straighten. It might be that you want to do these exercises and movements a little bit slower. That's fine. Just go to kind of the right speed for you as the helper and also for the person that's doing the exercise. let the arm rest down onto the pillow again. So just having a little bit of a look at, at massage and what we call sensory stimulation, um, all of these movements and handling of the arm is really good for the sensory system um, to kind of normalize the feeling of your touch. Um, and also you can use massage to help with that. So one of the good kind of massage techniques for the hand. Sometimes people have quite a tight hand, so to really kind of stretch the muscles out of the palm, you can support the, the hand on your hands and then use your thumbs just to kind of stretch out the palm. You can also go up kind of into the little finger. And again, this side you can kind of stretch the thumb just helps to loosen off kind of tight muscles and soft tissue in the palm of the hand. Good, so it's just really stretching out. You need to apply a little bit of pressure to do this. Again, not too much pressure so it's painful usually people quite like this kind of massage. And you're thinking about stretching the tissue out when you're doing this. 
massage. So you can do that on the palm, but then you can also do it up the arm, all the way up the arm. Um, quite often we suggest to people just to use a bit of moisturiser that you might normally use. Um, and the idea is that you always work your way up, aiming to kind of for drainage away from the, the wrist and hand and up towards the armpit, which is where your lymph nodes are. So you can work up through the forearm and then you can do up through the inside of the arm. Again, applying a bit of pressure and then you can go up into the kind of top of the arm and stop up at the shoulder. Um, another kind of exercise that you could do which works on your sensation is use different textures um, to kind of stimulate the arm. Just for a, an example is you could use a pillowcase and it's simply just using the pillowcase all over the different areas of the fingers, the hand, kind of up the arm towards the shoulder. You can use it on the inside of the palm, on the forearm, just to kind of get the person used to what the sensation feels like. And then to progress this, you can ask the person to close their eyes and then really get them to think about what the sensation of the pillowcase would be like perhaps name where you're touching as well so I can feel you're on the back of my forearm now yeah. now you're by my thumb so it's just helping me to really tune into my arm and the sensations that I'm feeling so you can do that with a pillowcase or you can use a towel which is slightly rougher sensation again you can do it with eyes closed and get the person to tell you Tips where you're finger. touching. Thumb, elbow, bicep, forearm. Okay. Um, one other kind of thing that you can practice doing if somebody's got quite a lot of movement in their arm. Um, we can, you can use different kind of items that you can find around the house, pop them in a pillowcase or in a bag. Um, so for example, in here, we've got a cup, a marble, a cone, a pen, a ping pong ball, elastic band. This is just to give you an example of some things that you might have around, a spoon, Bulldog clip, some money, and a paper clip. You can put all of those things into a bag or a pillowcase, give them a bit of a shake up, and then you can just ask the person without looking to pop their hand into the bag and get them just to identify the different objects that they might might be able to feel in there. Bulldog clip, I think. And yeah, they can bring it out and have a look and you can just repeat that with all the different kind of objects so get them to tell you what it is before they bring it out and can see it spoon so that's something just to practice feeling different kind of objects and textures um, I hope that you found this useful um, if you have any questions or concerns like I said at the beginning you can give us an email or give us a call um, and hopefully we can give you some more advice and we'll see you all soon. Thank you.